Hey everyone, and welcome back to the screening. The Pawn Stars have been one of the most popular shows of the 2000s. The series takes place in Las Vegas and documents the daily occurrences of a local shop known as World Famous Gold and Silver Pawn Shop. The business was first opened in 1989 as a 24-hour pawn shop run by Richard Harrison. Throughout the series, customers have brought some extremely valuable items into the shop, some more bizarre than others. Many of these items have proven to be extremely rare and valuable, with certain customers asking well over $1 million for their prized possessions. Here are 8 of the rarest antiques ever shown on Pawn Stars. Before we begin, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos about your favorite movies and TV shows. Number 8. Vintage Disney Store Display Rick enters the room completely lost for words. Whoa. This has got to be like the most impressive collection I've ever seen in my life. A local man contacted Rick, asking him to take a look at his prized Disney collection. It's a Mickey, Donald, and another Mickey. Amazing. The customer's home is soon revealed to be stocked full of old Disney memorabilia, commonly depicting Mickey Mouse. The man is so overwhelmed with his collection that he has literally referred to his home as the Mouse House. This is it. The mouse house. The customer states that much comes from the 30s or 40s, meaning that several of his pieces are over 90 years old. Rick recalls that much of the very early Disney memorabilia was simply created to make a quick buck off of consumers. However, this man has somehow managed to build a collection large enough to fill seemingly every corner of his home. The man soon shows Rick a two-piece collection of paper mache Disney characters that are known to be the most fragile Disney memorabilia to have ever existed. The man eventually agrees to sell the figures to Rick and they agree on a price of $32,500. Considering these products are almost certainly one of a kind by this point in history, that seems to be an incredible deal. Number 7. Tibetan Buddha a local man headed to the pawn shop with a large statue of Buddha that was offered to him as a housewarming gift for his new home, though he isn't Buddhist. A friend of mine gave it to me as a housewarming gift. I bet you were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> because of this, he would rather not keep the statue around his home and decided to sell it. He tells the story of a previous Buddha statue that he owned, which was very similar to this one. He says that a particular statue sold for around $10,000 and he is hoping to receive that same amount for this statue. As it would turn out, this statue was found to have been created sometime during the 1750s. Its origin was dated back to the 18th century, making it extremely valuable to the right collector. A professional was called into the shop to assess the value of the piece. I have seen these on the auction block going from 10 to 15,000 bucks. And Rick and the customer eventually decide on a price of $7,500. Not bad for a simple housewarming gift, am I right? Number 6. Antique Fire Buckets The next item is extremely odd. A man brought in a small portion of his collection of fire buckets. The origin of these buckets had been traced all the way back to ancient Rome. The buckets would be filled with water and passed from person to person with this process soon being given the name Bucket Brigade. These particular buckets are said to have come from Maine, with the customer claiming that they are from the late 1700s or late 1800s. He says that he is needing to sell the small portion of his collection because one of his children is planning to attend college and he would like to assist in paying tuition. It's crazy how much a few buckets lying around the house can get this guy. Anyways, the man told Rick that he is looking to get around $5,000 for the buckets. This is certainly a fair price, but for Rick to profit on them, they would need to be a bit cheaper. The two eventually decide on $3,500, to which the man agreed. All right, we got a deal. Um, go this way, um, we'll do some paperwork, my guys will get these, all right? Okay, great. Number 5. Medieval Mace an ordinary day at the pawn shop all changed when a man brought an object into the shop that Rick won't soon forget. What do we have? Well, obviously it's a mace. Um, put that down gently. <laughs> he entered the door with a large mace in his hands. These weapons have been used throughout history as they are quite simple to make and deliver an incredible blow to your enemies. 
The idea behind a mace is simply that it's an object with a long handle, perfect for leverage, with a sharpened head attached to it. They were most commonly used around the Middle Ages by heavily guarded knights who would swing them while on horseback. The man states that this particular mace came from between 1550 and 1560. A professional was called in to validate these claims and turns out they were all true. Rick knew he couldn't miss out on this item for both its abnormal function and unique past, so he settled on buying it for $2,100. Let's walk up front and we'll write this thing up. Number 4. 1602 Shipwreck Bell A woman entered the shop with a large metal object that was hundreds of years old. As it would turn out, this was a large bell that was pulled from a shipwreck sometime around 1602. The woman wasn't entirely certain how much she wanted for the bell, but a professional was called in and stated that the bell could likely fetch around $15,000 at an auction. I think this could be put into one of the treasure auction catalogs, $15,000, give or take. Rake decided to pay the full price as he knew he could make loads of profit off this thing. The woman said she now plans to use the funds to complete her move and then purchase a large screen television to place in her new living area. I sure wish I had some lousy $15,000 bell in my home. Number 3. Denarius Coin A man approached Rick with the product of a lifetime. He laid the item out on the countertop and revealed that it is an ancient denarius coin from Rome. The coin was said to have been from the year 42 BC, meaning this coin is over 2,000 years old. The coin shows the image of two daggers and at the base says Ides of March. The other side of the coin shows none other than Brutus, one of the most recognizable and influential individuals in world history. These coins are most commonly around 90% pure silver and would often be worth more than a Roman soldier's payday. The coin was validated by a professional, with the man asking for $150,000. If I give you $110,000, I've got to have more than that. If you change your mind or have really bad luck while you're in town, <laughs> come back and see me. Despite its incredible history, Rick wasn't willing to pay any more than $110,000 and had to step away from the deal. The man walked out of the store with the vintage coin and there's no doubt he sold it elsewhere. Number 2. Incunable Book a young man brought a strange looking book into the pawn shop, informing Rick that the book is known as an incunable book. The customer says that the book was printed in 1484, with incunable books commonly being bound in pigskin around this time. An incunable book is a name given to any printed book that was bound within the first 50 years of the creation of the printer. The item was found to have been illuminated at a much later date than the previously assumed year of 1484. This nearly cut the value in half, but Rick was still deeply interested in purchasing the antique item. After a few back and forths, the two men settled on a price of $2,500. I'll do 25. 2500? You got it. Meet you right over there. It's safe to say I'm going to be looking through my bookshelf today in case I have $2500 lying around. Number 1. Disney Globe. Here's an item I'm sure everyone would love to collect. A customer brought an extremely old globe into the shop for Rick to take a look at. However, this isn't your standard world globe. This globe was painted in a Disneyland theme, with the seller asking $3,500 for the globe. People love anything to do with Walt Disney or Disneyland. And how much do you want for it? Looking for 3500 Rick was interested but extremely uncertain about the value of the item, so he called in a professional to check it out. What's particularly interesting about this globe is that while it was created in honor of Disneyland, it was allegedly created before Disneyland was ever even built. The professional soon told the story of how these globes would have been sold around the time that Disneyland first opened, invalidating the claims of the customer who believed that the globe was made before the park's opening. I'll give you 350. No, I, I don't think so. I think I paid three times that. Good luck to you. I thank you for your time. The man stated that he recalled paying over $1,000 for the globe, which is truly unfortunate. In the end, he left the shop without making a deal, but let's hope that this man was able to find some way to profit off this globe, even if it wasn't worth exactly what he had hoped for. Thank you for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos on your favorite TV shows, and tap one of the two videos on screen for another amazing video.